We've got rain coming and farmers are never given a choice on what weather we get. We've got to respond to whatever it is in front of us and make the best judgment we can that day. And today we're hoeing. We've got rain on the way and we're doing a practice in Northern Maine that's called hoeing. Anywhere else they call it hilling. We're using a mid-mount toolbar. On the other side, there's a hydraulic cylinder that raises and lowers these teeth. So these are the teeth and these are the feet. These feet are called calves tongues. They're about three inches wide and when they're new, they're about 11 inches long. These are what are called spades and they've got wings that uh, pivot on this last second and last pass of the year. I've got the uh, wings all the way in because we've got pretty big plant growth. Farmers are always restrained by weather conditions and soil conditions. And in the last two weeks, we've had four and a half inches of rain. We need the soil to be dry to be able to do the hilling or the hoeing. And it's been a challenge. And we've got another inch of rain in the forecast coming tonight. And our concern is we're approaching row closure where the potato plants, they're planted three foot apart. And as the plants grow up, when the leaves from one row uh, kiss and touch the leaves from the other row, that's called row closure. And as you go through with a tractor, you can imagine you beat up the plants. So we're getting a hot summer. Last month, June was the hottest June on record for Northern Maine. Uh, so we're getting days in the 80s. We got plenty of water. The plants are growing really fast. And so we're making the judgment that we're better off to try to finish up the hoeing process today and not have to do it next week when the plants are going to be that much bigger. So unless you hill up, you're going to get tubers exposed to the sunlight. Then they're going to turn green because the tubers are an extension of the stem. The green is chlorophyll and that chlorophyll is in relation to solanine, which is the poison in potatoes. So in order to avoid having bitter tasting potatoes, you got to do a good job hilling up, in our case, soil, making a big hill which covers the developing tubers and prevents the sunlight from getting at the tubers, greening them up and turning them bitter. We go through twice when we do our hoeing or hilling, and the last pass that we like to do is like three or four days ahead of row closure, so that once those rows close in, the foliage is so dense there's no light getting to the ground underneath and any uh, weed seed that has not germinated is not going to get enough light to sprout and grow. So if we time it right, the, the hilling procedure does kill weeds and if we do it right before we get row closure, we're going to have a clean field with no more weed germination. So these rows have just been held up the one time, we did that last week. And these he's gone through and held up again. Now the plants as I go over uh, with the tractor, the toolbar, the position of the toolbar is low enough now that I've kind of created deep valleys that my tractor is down lower that I'm kind of laying over the uh, plants but they will bounce back overnight and you'd never know that I was in the field tomorrow. On the back of the tractor, we've got what's called a rear mount toolbar. These are John Deere teeth. The toolbar is raised and lowered by a lever connected to this three-point hitch. But what I like to do is, as I'm going through, I'll drop this in the dirt and then compaction that the tires has caused by going in with the fingers. I'm loosening up that soil so when we get this into rain, it's not going to pool, it's going to be able to go right through. But last pass of the year in the field, I want to uh, fluff up the soil, make it easy so that if we are getting rain, it's going to go in the soil to where the potatoes are going to benefit from it. And what we don't want is compacted soil to where the rain hits it and then it rolls downhill and causes erosion. So here uh, where the rows begin, this is called the headlands. The headlands at the beginning of the row where you turn around, uh, these are not weeds that are coming up. This is actually a plantation that we put down right after we got done planting potatoes. We put beneficial flowers around the perimeter of the field. 
Beneficial flowers provide nutrition and a refuge to beneficial insects that are predators of economic pests and potatoes. Uh, insects like aphids, leaf hoppers, flea beetles, even Colorado potato beetles. And then within the field, every so often, we've got beneficial beds. So in our beneficial bed this year, we've got 17 experimental varieties that we're growing in it. So these are the earliest beneficial flowers that, um, that ever come out. Uh, first one we have here is California golden poppy. This is sweet alyssum. This is phacelia, cosmos. It'll be blossoming later. This is buckwheat. Here's an early cosmos that's almost ready to open up and blossom. Tapmaster tillage radish, chicory, cosmos, and there's a predator on it. Here's some kind of a predator on California golden poppy. So we've got about 12 or 15 different varieties in the seed mix that we put down. And uh, those were planted about five weeks ago. Over the course of the second half of the summer, we get a full array of blossoms, different flowers coming at different times of the year, and they blossom in well until the fall. Okay, thanks for watching. See you next time.